All right, looks like we're live. Uh, YouTube is saying it's not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming, but I don't know how honest that is. Right now, I'm sure that there's enough people streaming around the world that uh, there's probably less bandwidth to go around, especially at my home connection. I'm sure I know that uh, like three of my neighbors are doing Zoom things this morning that they weren't last week because they're all they're all back in school sessions, so everybody's using Zoom. Google Hangouts, all that kind of stuff to do their schooling. And it looks like the stream is starting to work. Um, so we can go ahead and get started. If, uh, if you can hear me, say hi on the, on the chat really quick, just to make sure that I'm not talking to myself. I see myself over here, and I think it's working. But you never know. Um, so last week uh, on the live stream, we were in like week one and a half-ish of when the U.S. was starting to get Pretty affected by coronavirus and uh, this week we're now pretty well affected here in the US and some European countries are not not doing so hot and uh, pretty much everyone that I know is on some form of lockdown uh, so hopefully you're doing well um, when I started this live streaming thing there it was the whole coronavirus pandemic was kind of it wasn't a pandemic back then it was an outbreak in a couple parts of the world that people were monitoring, but not many people were worrying too much about. And now it seems like pretty much everybody, uh, everybody everywhere is, is at least worried about it. Um, so hopefully you're doing well. Um, you know, we'll keep doing these live streams. I'm, I'm still fortunate that uh, I've been doing work from home for years, so it's not that big of a difference for me. Uh, the one thing is I'm able to catch up on a lot of my home improvement projects. Right now I'm working on a, a sewing area for my wife in the basement, getting some electrical over there and putting in lighting and uh, re-insulating the joist bays and all that kind of stuff so that it's not kind of a nasty area in the basement. It's a lot nicer. So uh, that's, I guess, one benefit. Um, another benefit is there's a lot of people doing a lot of fun, creative things. Uh, but I also know there's there's a downside. Some people I know have already been losing their jobs uh, or having hours cut back, that kind of thing. So hopefully that's not you. Uh, but if it is you, maybe you can learn some new skills from this video. Uh, maybe you can uh, also uh, learn some new skills from my two books, Ansible for DevOps and Ansible for Kubernetes. Today is March 31st, and um, when I put those up for free, I said to the end of March. So. Later today, I, uh, those will not be free anymore. Um, so if you are interested at all in DevOps, automation, uh, Kubernetes, scalability, infrastructure, please go and grab those two books. Uh, the links are uh, in, in this issue, uh, linked for more here. Uh, and if you get them on LeanPub, the cool thing is that every update I ever make to those books will be free forever. So you can go in and, and grab those updates. Um, whenever I, I publish them. And for Ansible for DevOps, it's been published for five years now, and I've been updating it since then. I've updated it 22 times. Uh, so I'll keep doing the same thing for Ansible for Kubernetes too, even if you didn't pay anything for it. It's the deal of the century right here. <clears throat> uh, there's also only a few days left to complete the Drupal local development survey. We've had over 500 responses so far, so we have some good data, but uh, if you haven't done this, uh, and if you do any Drupal work at all, uh, or if you know Drupal developers who uh, haven't taken the survey, please share the link. Uh, that That is helpful for guiding the community, seeing uh, what tools other people are using and what systems they're using, that kind of thing, so you can get a get a perspective on it and, and maybe even see some tools that are surprisingly widely used that you might never have thought of using before, and you might try them. Um, <clears throat> and hello and welcome to Will, uh, Mohammed, and Demon326. Not sure why it's Demon326 and not like 327, but uh, hello to all of you. Uh, and anybody else who's watching this uh, this video after the fact. Um, as a reminder, I'm all these live streams, I save them, and they'll be on my YouTube channel, and I have them linked from uh, the, the blog post uh, that has all of these episodes embedded in it. Uh, so last day for that, last days for the Drupal Dev Survey. I wanted to talk about uh, the thing that we left off on our live stream last week uh, talking about, which was the, the page title suggestion. So um, I think it was Oliver Davies had mentioned uh, we were working on, uh, not LinkedIn, uh, localhost. I can't spell today. 
Uh, we are working on the, the uh, title for uh, the blog view. And I wanted to change the title. I wanted to change the, uh, the markup on the title to make it visually hidden, but not hidden, um, not hidden for people using uh, screen readers. And because Oliver Davies mentioned, like, I think what I was doing was I was removing the, I, I was using CSS to hide it and not in a very accessible way. And it's better to just use the class that Drupal core gives us, which is uh, visually dash hidden. And to do that, uh, I needed to override the theme template. And to override the theme template, I had to get the context of the page that I was on. And the, the theme template didn't have a variable for that to, to remove this. Like, I think the, the title is, uh, let's see. I'll look at the uh, markup here and find page title. And that is, what is the markup here? Uh, it's recent blog posts. And I wanted that to be hidden, but I still wanted it to be in the page markup for, uh, for SEO and for screen readers, that kind of thing. Uh, so eventually I found out that I could uh, use theme hook, uh, th hook, hook theme suggestions, hook alter. So I have Jeff Gearling, my theme name, theme suggestions, page title alter, which is the page title hook uh, to alter the theme suggestions uh, and add in uh, a new one when you're on a view so what, what this is saying is if you're on a uh, if you're on a page that's a view, which this one is, this is a view, the blog view that we created last week, uh, then it'll add a suggestion called page title view and then the view ID. So I could override the page template, the page title template for any view. And what I did was I overwrote it for uh, where is it themes Jeff Gearling templates. I overwrote it for the blog view, which we created last week and I added visually hidden. And so we did all that work just to add this class, uh, but it's useful to know how to do that because there are times when uh, you need to override a template, but only for a certain kind of thing. Uh, and that, that's, you know, that's how you do it in Drupal. Uh, sometimes a little bit convoluted, but it is, it's also powerful because now I can override this template for different views if I want, uh, because this, this is a flexible way to do it instead of just overriding it for that one view or using CSS to target that one particular page. I would have to do that again for any other view or page. Uh, this way I can just override the template for other views if I need to. Uh, so anyway, that was that issue. Um, and uh, it, we had just run into some issues last week doing that. And I wanted to, to clear that up and, and how I ultimately did it, uh, getting, the, getting the view from the route. Uh, and then uh, the next thing was, this was something I actually looked up last night uh, just because I didn't want to spend a bunch of time on the live stream. And it took about an hour to figure this out. So it would have been a, a wasted hour. Uh, w early on in the migrations, like the first time we ran, we, we ran migrate upgrade and then migrate import uh, to run the migrations. And the first time we did it, there were tons of errors. It, you know, it was, it was hitting errors on like every third or fourth migration. So we fixed some of those and then fixed some other ones and then added some modules that weren't enabled and fixed those. Eventually, we got it down to the point where all the migrations were running, uh, but it would still give me this notice that said, field discovery failed for Drupal Core 7. Did this site have CCK or field module installed? Error, no database connection configured for source plugin D7 field instance. And uh, a couple times I looked into it. Uh, this, was, th this wasn't really related to that issue. That was a different issue. Um, uh, but I kept looking into it, and... Every time I Google this, so if I take this string right here and I Google it uh, in quotes, I find the issue that I opened about it. <laughs> so that, like, so, so there was this, this uh, site that had a, a mention of it, um, J Jayco Solutions, but it was something with the file migration that was actually a problem. Um, and then there was an error here, but it was kind of part of a bigger error, and so that never got anywhere. And then I found you know, searching for the issue, I find the issue that I was already looking for it for. So that's always not very helpful. And then there, there's not much else. Uh, you can see there's only two pages of results. Uh, so eventually I, I kept looking and looking and trying to find what was going on. I found out that it related to these different migrations. So I looked into those migrations, what they were doing. There's nothing in them that seemed incorrect. I looked at the field mappings, they were fine. Um, then I was reading through some Drupal issues. 
I went into the field discovery class, which is where this error message comes from, and I was trying to de debug it, but I was getting like a lot of the things, like I would try to get the ID of the plugin and it was null, and I would try to get the ID of the field it was migrating and it was null, and I was like, I don't know what's going on. Um, this for some reason is not gonna load the Drupal page. Hopefully my internet's working. It looks like video is, so. Um, anyway, so I dug into this class, I was debugging things, I was spitting out variables and nothing made any sense. And uh, I even went down a rabbit hole looking at the forum module because I, I thought I might have enabled it years ago on Drupal 6. And maybe that was the issue, but it wasn't. Uh, I just kept going down all these rabbit holes. And eventually, uh, after all those rabbit holes, I found that uh, Delish Creative, who is, I forget the name of this person on Twitter, uh, she had had the exact same issue Jenny, uh, she had the exact same issue on January 30 this year, and uh, I forget what the search was that I finally found this Twitter thread, but I found this Twitter thread, and at the end of it, this was the problem. Uh, my migration database group name was Drupal 7, and for some reason, somewhere in Drupal Migrate Upgrade or somewhere in Drupal's Migrate Modules, there must be a hard-coded string for calling the database group Migrate and since I use the, 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 the key uh, Drupal 7 instead of migrate, I was running into this issue as well. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Jenny, for that uh, tip. That solved the issue for me. Um, and I have a Twitter thread here that kind of goes into the, the same discovery that I had. And also how frustrating uh, the error messages we get out of Drupal can sometimes be. This is not an exclusive problem to Drupal. This is a problem with all software. Uh, but the, the upshot of that was finally now, now that I changed the uh, key, so in my settings.php, I changed the key from Drupal 7 to migrate, and I changed the key in the settings file from Drupal 7 to migrate. Uh, the upshot of that is that now every single migration is passing without failures. Uh, there's no problems anymore, and every single thing that I migrate on this site uh, is working. And... Uh, so get rest, I just posted on here. Uh, that is a good idea to create an issue. I'm really good at complaining sometimes. I'm usually good about creating an issue, so maybe I'll do that after the fact here. Um, yeah, but that, that was a fun hour last night trying to figure that out. And I wanted to share that solution and also share the point that a lot of times in migrations, uh, especially in migrations, because with a migration, every site is a little different you're gonna run into some bumps like that and you're gonna be scratching your head and not, not understanding what's going on. And uh, sometimes it is just a strange little thing like that and you hope that you're not the first person that ran into the issue. Luckily, I was the second person at least. Uh, and so in, instead of me giving up on it, I, I found some help from someone else and, and got it fixed. Uh, so the next thing that I wanted to do on the migration is something that on most migrations, it's not going to take like an hour. It's going to take days or weeks. Sometimes, in this case, it's we're in the second month now. Uh, so uh, you're going to have to upgrade Drupal and you're going to have to upgrade modules because it's not like the world in Drupal stops once you start doing a migration. You have your current site that you're migrating from. Like mine is jeffgearling.com. And that current site's going to have new content added to it over time. And you also have Drupal, which is always evolving, and Drupal core has updates for security sometimes or for, for new features, that kind of thing. And all the modules that you use, they're going to be updating too. So during the migration, you need to keep things upgraded. And so um, I wanted to upgrade Drupal core on the fly while, while we're doing this. And the nice thing about these upgrades is usually they're a little easier to do when you're migrating than when you have a site that's in existence already. Sometimes you can have issues uh, when you're testing an upgrade uh, and then you push it to production and it behaves a little differently or something. We don't have a production environment yet, which I like because that means we can be more experimental uh, and we can just upgrade the, the dependencies in Drupal core and all that and then see where things go in CI and make sure that a new installation works. Uh, so it's slightly easier actually during a migration to do these upgrades. Uh, so right now uh, I can, I forget the composer command. I think it's like composer info Drupal core, something like that. Um, well, yeah, so Drupal core, it gives you all the information. So I'm running 8.8.2 right now. 
I thought I was on 8.8.3, but apparently I'm on 8.8.2. I want to upgrade Drupal Core to 8.8.4. So this is, this is an area where there's about 200 different ways to do it with Composer. Not 200, probably three or four, but feels like 200 because some of them can get a little complicated. Um, and the easiest thing would be for some packages, if I know that I want to upgrade Drupal Core, I would say um, Composer update Drupal Core. And I think that that should work. The problem is that some dependent, like so, sometimes when you upgrade something, dependencies don't get updated the right way, or there's a conflict between a dependency of Drupal Core and a dependency of Drush or a dependency of Migrate tools or something like that. And then you run into weird issues. So for now, I'm just going to run composer update Drupal slash core and see what happens. Um, I'd also be interested to see what uh, Drupal's documentation says. Uh, core composer. Well, it's doing that since composer is going to take forever and ever. Uh, this documentation is incomplete. That's always fun. Uh, but it has been updated recently. A lot of times with Drupal documentation, sometimes it can be way out of date, uh, but usually if it's been edited within the past few months or even the past year or so, it's probably not that far out of date. Uh, but uh, it is important to read any warnings that are in this text because it, it does say that Drupal 8.8, .8, which we're running, had a lot of changes for Composer. Um, but let's see what it's saying. Uh, so it's saying Drupal slash star. Mm. And you can run composer outdated. So <clears throat> actually should, so th this is another situation where I'm seeing the documentation. This is a command composer outdated Drupal slash star. Uh, this should be in code text. So I'm actually gonna update that while we're sitting here waiting uh, for the benefit of anybody else coming to this documentation later. Uh, because when there, when it's a command, it's easier to see, oh, you should run this command if it's highlighted with code formatting instead of just uh, plain plain text. So I'm going to take this, make it code. Where is the code highlighter? Is this it? Code. No, I don't want to do that. How do I make something code? Oh, it's this button right here. But it's grayed out, which is interesting. Oh, well, that's, I don't know why that's grayed out, but it still works. Oh, and I don't want use. Uh, I need to undo that. Composer outdated Drupal slash star. And explain my changes. Um, format the composer outdated command code highlight uh, as code. All right. So usually when I'm doing this kind of stuff, I try to help uh, improve the documentation if I can. Now you can see it's use composer outdated Drupal slash star, more like a command. Um, if you want to see if there's major version updates available, this is unbelievably taking forever. Uh, uh, make sure if there's anything. Oh, so it wanted me to do it with dependencies. I'm actually going to do that. Uh, with dependencies, this is still taking absolutely forever. I know the CPU's kind of burning through right now, but it's funny that uh, you'd think that the composer would be shown up in this list, but oh, there it is, PHP. Uh, but other things are taking up more of the more of the time. OBS doing the compression, and I think kernel task is part of that compression and network transport for the, the live stream. Uh, but still, still, this this shouldn't take quite so long. I don't know why composer commands take so long sometimes. So uh, Daniel is saying composer update Drupal slash core recommended core composer scaffold with dependencies. Um, well, I'm going to follow this instruction here and see what it does. Oh, wait, I am using core. <laughs> OK, so you're correct. I should be doing that. Uh, yeah, I'm using core recommended, so I need to stop this and try Drupal core recommended and then Drupal slash core composer scaffold. 
All right, and I'm gonna, uh, what is this? Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna link to this page in my issue because also with these issues, another thing that I tend to do for myself is anytime I'm working on an issue, if I do something to resolve it, I'll put in the issue what I did because inevitably in the next few weeks, a new security release will come out and I'll have to do it again. And instead of going back and doing all these commands again, I'd rather just go back to this issue and be like, oh, I resolved it by running this command, this command, and this command, and then I was done. Uh, so I'm going to say following the documentation in update core via composer, I ran the following command to upgrade Drupal core to the latest version. And I ran this guy. We'll see if that actually works or not. Um, and Daniel says the docs are not very neat, but I mean, it, it, the docs are correct. It's just, it, the problem is that there's a thousand different ways you can install Drupal right now. And uh, it's hard to make good documentation when there's a thousand ways to do it. And I know that was one of the things that initially in Drupal 8's development cycle, I was trying to help a little bit with the idea of like, instead of having a thousand ways to do something like with the Drupal development environment, let's have one like blessed way, one way that we, we choose to highlight and then link off to, and you can do it another hundred different ways. The problem is it's hard to please everyone that way. And in open source, if you don't please everyone, then some people get offended and leave the community and don't, don't do stuff. And so it's, it's kind of a tricky balance with a big open source project like Drupal, but we're doing better, I think now, especially as we move more towards like just use Composer instead of, you could use Composer or Tarballs or whatever other way that you want to install it. Um, so it looks like that worked. Uh, so the next steps are, I'm going to run database updates. I don't think there are any, but it's still a good idea to do it. Um, so I'm going to say Docker compose exec. And this is drush update db. And if there are any updates available, it'll run them. But like I said, I don't think there are any from 8.8.2 .8 to 8.8.4. And it looks like that's what it did. Uh, so it shows you when it's doing the up updates, uh, what it's updating. Huh. Daniel says, yes, but Composer 1, and this is the Composer page, so yeah. I guess I guess some people use Drupal slash core without core recommended. Um, I, I don't remember from looking into that what the differences were, but... I would imagine that if it's recommended, you should be doing it that way. So I don't know why you wouldn't be doing it that way. So I would imagine this should be the default, but whatever. Um, uh, anything else? All right, it looks like everything else is good on this page. All right. And this fix was for the CK editor library, which is uh, used for WYSIWYG content editing. I don't actually have it enabled on my site, uh, and I don't know if I'll ever enable it on Drupal 8. But it's still, it's good not to have code that could be exploited, because you never know if there's a new exploit that could come up using the same technique that you didn't even think about or these people didn't think about. Looks like there's no pending updates for the database, uh, so the last thing was to do the config export. There might actually be some changes in the config export, uh, uh, CEX, I think, is config export. I just don't want to type out the full words config export. Uh, but anytime you update anything in Drupal, you should always run database updates and export configuration. Uh, because if anything changes for either of those things and then you try importing the old stuff, or if you don't run database updates, you can have a schema in your database or your configuration that's active that screws things up. And that's never a good thing. It looks like there are a few changes here. Uh, uh, status, I'm gonna check what they are. So the composer file changed because Drupal core is updated. I don't know what these are. This one, I don't want this block in here. I don't know why it keeps coming up. Uh, uh, rm-f, get rid of that file. And 
I'm guessing most of the rest of the changes will just be, so that's Drupal core. That's the composer file. Yeah, most of the other changes are just the weight of different um, of different fields in listings are changing and the UUIDs change, so that's normal. That's interesting. I don't know why <laughs> the admin role had this. I, I don't have the Google Anal Analytics module enabled, so I don't know where this permission came from, I guess. I might have used to use it on jeffgearling.com, uh, but a while back I actually switched my analytics platform instead of using Google because I don't really like the fact that they aggregate all of the data in the whole world on pretty much every person in the whole world. Uh, it's kind of a privacy issue in my opinion. So I stopped using Google Analytics for all my sites and I now use Fathom uh, Analytics, which is, it's a lot simpler, like it doesn't give you all the data that Google did, but there's a benefit to that in that all the users of my site, when they visit my site, don't have all of their browser and history and all that sent up to Google. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, Analytics.midwesternmac.com is my my analytics site, and you can see it shows you a current visitor count. Uh, doesn't show you a ton of information about them. Doesn't give you a lot of demographic information and stuff because it it's not tracking that. It's better to track less, I think. I mean, the main things I care about is if I get a traffic spike, I just wanna see where people are coming from, how much time they're spending on my site, which is right here, uh, and get get some of those analytics. And what, what pages are the most popular? Uh, it's funny. This page, installing PHP 7 on Windows 10, has consistently been in the top three pages on my site for like three years now, ever since I published it. So if anybody wants to spend the time to write a book or something about doing open source development on Windows, you'll probably have a bestseller because there's not much on it. Uh, anything I write about Windows tends to get a lot of attention just because it's an underserved community and there's a lot of people that are kind of stuck developing on Windows. A um, few people choose to do it, uh, so that's fun too. Uh, the name of the platform, that's uh, Fathom Analytics. Uh, and if you go to their site, there's there's actually a couple different ways you can install it. I'm running my own Fathom server separately uh, just because I can maintain that pretty easily. Uh, but you can use Fathom's hosted service too. And uh, you know some of the reasons I like it, I mentioned the, the privacy, they don't use cookies. It doesn't track you with a cookie. Um, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't take up much, much memory. Like the, the JavaScript is a couple kilobytes instead of, I think Google's is like 15 or 20 kilobytes. It's super fast. You can host it on your own site um, and you can make it so that, that you don't, like jeffgearland.com loads in less than a second pretty much everywhere in the world because I don't have any third-party integrations anymore. Uh, so anyway, that's Fathom, pretty cool little platform. I have a blog post on it, and yes, it's free and open source. They have a free plan for their hosted service too, I think, uh, but but if you want to use their hosted service, I would pay them for it just because it's a nice, nice tool and that's a way that they can make money doing their development. Um, so it looks like we got Drupal core upgraded and that's all the changes. So I'm going to say, make sure I have them all in there. Uh, get add all those changes. And I should really do this on a branch, but, um, I'm happy to YOLO it today. We're at 1030 anyways. I don't want to spend an extra minute doing that. Uh, get commit dash M fixes number 35 upgrade. Drupal core to 8.8.4. Ooh, that rhymes. What a good thing. I love it when you have a good commit message like that. All right, git push. And uh, as always, the, the cool thing about uh, using GitHub Actions or Travis CI or whatever is that uh, this commit is now going to be tested. Uh, and if there's a problem, it'll email me. It'll kick me out an email saying that the, the build failed. Uh, but if I go here, there's a little orange dot, which means it's testing. And if there's any problems, it'll show me. Uh, it's nice to be able to do that, and especially if you're using pull requests, because sometimes it's annoying to reinstall everything locally. If you're working on something and you just want to do an update like this, you can let GitHub Actions test that it actually still installs and no problems happen. Um, another good benefit of having a good CI system. Uh, so anyway, we'll let that go. And we got Drupal 8 upgraded. Uh, and module upgrades are similar. So, you know, I did, uh, what was it? Composer update Drupal core recommended. 
So for module updates, you'd want to always use with dependencies. Uh, and I could say like, uh, what's a module that I have on my site? Markdown. So I can say Drew, uh, composer update Drupal Markdown. However, there's there's no updates for Drupal Markdown. Uh, but I can do, I can also do composer outdated. Is that it? I think that's the command. And that's going to look at all the packages I have installed and show me what's not up to date. <laughs> Bad Jeff. Yes. Not following the thing. But this is my personal site. I can do whatever I want on it. Although it is open source, so I should like it's it's freely available. So I should do things better so that people learn from my example. Um, but I think Composer outdated. I forgot to quit mail earlier. I think Composer outdated uh, shows you the the list of all the things. And this is not just Drupal modules and Drupal themes and Drupal core. This is all of the Composer tools and dependencies you use. So, like for for uh, development, I have Devel. It'll check that. Of course, that's a Drupal module, but it'll also check Drush. It'll check my Composer patches uh, installation that manages a patch uh, for a migration issue that I had. I actually don't need that patch anymore, but I'll leave it in there for now. Um, and anything else that I'm using, Composer installers, all these different things. So it is shown that there are some updates available for Symphony Components and Doctrine and Composer. So some, at some point, I might update the rest of those things. I don't want to now. Looks like Admin Toolbar actually has an update. Uh, and of course, Drush, but that's not compatible yet with Migrate. It might actually be now. I'm not sure. Uh, but there are some updates available. We'll get to those some other time. One thing that you can always try is Composer Update. That updates everything in your whole project. That's often a little dangerous, especially if you don't do this frequently, because you know, this is a big list of stuff here. There's what? Uh, let's go up here. Keep going. That is uh, 66 different things that are being updated. And who's to say if one of those 66 things causes an issue on your site? Um, I generally like to update things one by one, any modules that need updates, things like that. Uh, just because a full, like a shotgun update like this is going to change a lot of things. If you have really good tests, maybe it's not as big a deal um, to do a composer update that way, but you can. Um, oh, you need to add Drupal. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I still like knowing. Uh, so Daniel in the comments is mentioning that uh, when you do composer outdated, uh, it's going to check everything. And... Uh, I do like to know other things too, because some of these are dependencies of Drupal modules, that kind of thing. Um, but I am using some other things like uh, Drush that have its own dependencies, so I, I can see those things outside of the Drupal realm. Uh, but you can say Drupal like that just to get just to get the Drupal packages that are outdated, Drupal modules and themes and things. Um, anyway, uh, so that's a fun little tangent on composer usage. Uh, there's also a composer y command and all these other fun composer commands. I have a blog post if, if you go to my website and search for uh, composer Drupal. There's a blog post on, um, where is it, managing Drupal 8 projects with composer. And another one on composer and Drupal are still strange uh, bedfellows. And one on updating when core doesn't update. Uh, all these blog posts have tips on how to use composer the right way and how to do things like uh, remove modules and uh, dev releases and all those kind of things. And uh, one command that can come in handy sometimes is if you try updating and it gives you a problem, composer prohibits is uh, helpful to um, figure out what's causing that, that package not to update. Yeah, and Daniel, Daniel has some good suggestions here. It's composer can be uh, intimidating, uh, I'll say even as somebody who has used it a lot and knows a lot more about it than some people, it can still be intimidating just because of, I mean, that's the nature of the beast. When you're, when you're doing dependency resolution with hundreds of packages, it's, it gets complicated, not just in Drupal. This is, I've had this issue with uh, Python projects and Ruby projects and Node.js projects. And uh, some things choose to have, like in Node.js, instead of having dependency resolution, like dependency conflicts, they install like 300 copies of the same package at different versions because that's easier for, the, for that system to use it that way. But that can introduce its own problems too. Anyway, um, 
Uh, the next thing that, that I'm going to work on on the site, uh, now that I have Drupal updated, up, upgraded, Drupal updated, that's a, that's a new way to say it. Uh, I'm going to get the comments working on blog posts. And I wanted to do that because I might need to override a template or two uh, to make sure that the comment form and the comments themselves are looking right. And I'm guessing that that's going to take me through to the end of today's time slot, but we'll see. Uh, you can see the blog The blog link is in here. I reinstalled the site fresh and remigrated it last night uh, when I was working on that other issue with the migrations. And uh, now that the blog view is in the system, the blog view link is in the menu, and that pops up here automatically. I still need to add, uh, let's see what the other ones are. I still need to add projects and about. So I think I have an issue open for that. I think what I might do is create a custom migration from a CSV file and add those two links uh, in a migration that runs after content migration is done. That way I don't have to manually go in and add these two links. Uh, it's, always, it's always a bad idea to have manual steps in your migration because uh, like I like to rerun migration and reinstall the site constantly uh, while I'm developing. And if there's anything that has to be done manually, it's going to end up uh, either causing you not to reinstall much, which causes problems down the line, especially as you get closer to launch. And it's going to introduce possible points of failure. Like if, if you go to launch and you forget to do one manual step, if you had 20 of them, you might be missing something important. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set that up to be automated and have a CSV file. We'll probably do that next week or the week after because uh, we'll work on the front page blocks and things like that. Um, but let's go to the blog, and I think there's a post with a lot of comments that would be helpful to, to theme. Yeah, you can get my DevOps books free the rest of this month. That post has 105 comments, 106 now on the live site. So somebody else commented between last night and this morning on it. Uh, so if I go down on the new site, here's the comments. So you can see it has submitted by and a permalink and, and all this. Uh, this is actually, some of the theming here is already done, it looks like, at least the base theming for that. Um, and again, I, I mentioned previously that the color scheme is a little, like these reply links are, if you have eyesight issues, these reply links are barely visible. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, this was just, I think, to make it... Uh, to make it look cool and hip and stuff with the dark theme when I was getting into to dark mode. Uh, but looking back on this, these probably need more contrast. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably work on that after I get the basic uh, theming styles moved over. So the first thing is there's a comments title here. There isn't one on this page, and I wonder why that is. Um, I don't know if I have a custom template for this or not. So here's a here's one comment. Field type comment comment wrapper. Which one is the, all the comments? That's this. So I have a comment uh, HTML that twig template, and there's no title. It looks like it looks like it just starts listing the comments themselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the theme that I have and see if there was something else in Drupal seven. So I had a comment.tpl.php, and that was for the comments themselves. So I wonder if in Drupal 7 there was a comments title in this section, and in Drupal 8 that went away. If I look here, yeah, it looks like there was a heading 2 with, with a title. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to override this field comment template, <coughs> and I'm going to add... I'm going to add a title, but let me check first before I do that. I'm going to go to Comment Types, Blog Post Comment, Manage Display, and see if there's anything in here for a title or something like that. Because in Drupal 7, you didn't have a whole lot of flexibility with the, the field display uh, for different content types and things for comments. For Drupal 8, there's it's it's all the same as like a typical node form and node entity. entity. Uh, so it looks like uh, maybe the label needs to be above. Let's see if that does it. Format default, save. And let's see if this did it. Mm, I still don't see comments anywhere. Oh, there's there's comment. 
That's weird. So there's a label here, but there's no label. Oh, there's, oh wow. So there's a label above every comment. I definitely don't want that happening. Yeah, forget that. Um, hidden. So that, that was kind of a disappointment. I thought that was going to be a label for the entire comments section, but it sure isn't. Uh, so I will override this field template um, since that wraps all the comments. So I'm going to find field dash dash comment dot html dot twig under the what theme is this classy. So I'm going to go here and again my shortcut for opening the folder containing it is hold down the command key and you can click on the title and go into the folder that contains it. So I'm going to copy that, go back into my theme, themes, Jeff Gearling, templates, paste it, and now I can override that template, field comment, and so it has a title thing here. That's weird. The, this doesn't make sense. It, it has a title in here, and it's not label hidden. I don't know if I'm missing something completely, but so I'm on comment types, structure. Maybe I need to go to content types, blog post, manage display. Let's see what it says. Because <laughs> I thought there would be a, a label. Ah, so this is, so that's, uh, this is where Drupal's flexibility can actually be confusing. So I went to structure, comment types, blog post, comment, manage display. And that's for an individual comment on a blog post, I guess. So I could show the label comment above it or not. But this is under structure, content types, blog post, display. And then the comment section, I have the comment list. And I want to say above. And let's see if that does it. Save. Because it should, it should now have an, a heading to uh, title with the comments in it. Let's see if it does. There it is. Okay, so that's that's one way to make it a little simpler. I don't have to override the template at all. I'm going to delete this template because I don't need to override that. I like not having to override a template when I don't have to because it's just more, more code that I have in my theme that I technically have to maintain. Uh, so the next step is getting... Uh, seeing what, uh, what the difference is here. I, I have a different background color on the comments on my Drupal 7 site. And so I'm going to see what um, looks like there's an, a section with ID comments. And I'm guessing that's different in Drupal 8. I think that's the field. So section field, field name. Uh, okay, I'm going to do, so it'll be field dash dash type dash comment instead of the ID comments. Comments. So this is going to be Actually, I'll just do a find and replace through the whole site. Uh, find that and replace it with field dash dash type dash comment. Replace. That didn't work. Why is this not working? Oh, just my computer's going insanely slow right now. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Live streaming is always fun for my, my poor little old laptop. Maybe I'll get a new, uh, I'm, I'm just waiting for Apple to introduce a new MacBook Pro 13 inch. The Air is so close to being the ideal computer for me, but when I do things like this live stream, where it uses a lot of CPU for a long time, it needs better thermal management. And the, the Pro laptop has a little bit better uh, thermal management with the fan and the heat sink and all that. The Air does well, but it, I fear that it would throttle a lot for me since I do things where it uses a lot of CPU for a long time. Anyway. Uh, so it's replacing these different things. Save that, save that, save that. And let's see if that worked. I think that the site has caching disabled right now. So this should this should pick it up without having to do a drush cache rebuild. It looks like maybe I'm lying about that though. Well, let's try doing a cache rebuild. Another note too, some, somebody mentioned that I could make this command a lot simpler by using ddev or 
uh, Doxel or, or Lando or whatever. And yes, I could. I can also create a, a bash alias, which I might, might or may not do. And the bash alias could be like DCEX or something, and then the drush command to run uh, that would just wrap this in a, in a bash alias. That's basically what all those tools are doing. Uh, you know, when you run fin something or when you run ddev something, it's just wrapping that command in the right uh, syntax gook to get it to run like this. So, you know, it, I, the reason I'm doing this is just because it's very explicit that I'm using Docker Compose to execute a command in the Drupal container using bash, and then that's the command. You know, yes, shortcuts are nice, but uh, when, when you're teaching someone especially, which I'm hoping that some people are learning from these videos, when you're teaching somebody, it's better to not use 15 layers of abstractions all the time because uh, then they then they w when they get out of that layers of abstractions and try to figure out what's going on you get very confused uh, so that's why i'm more explicit about this uh, the cache rebuilds complete let's see if that helps anything uh, yes as daniel says or i could even have an ansible command that could do this stuff um, ansible it's, i i don't tend to wrap all the composer stuff that i do or not composer all the uh, docker stuff i do in ansible some things I do, like building container images and things like that. Ooh, that does not look right. Um, but some things I don't. Wait, why? Apparently it changed one of the generated CSS files. I'm going to not save that and not save that. Uh, dark mode. So dark mode should be overriding this. But you know what? I wonder if because it's not an ID anymore, it's not being overridden. This looks a very kind of like an Easter pastel color here. So this is getting field type comment. It is getting overridden there because I guess blog.css is after dark mode.css in the page markup. So since the two things have the same uh, precedence in CSS and the files are ordered that way, it's getting uh, the field type comment settings from blog.css and not dark mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in a dark mode, and it's on line 94. And I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and add section on here, and see if that changes anything. Hopefully it will just pick up the CSS file change. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we got the comments thing like that. Next step is to get all of these different things uh, working correctly. So I'm going to have to override. I'll have to override the comment display itself, which is coming from comment.html.twig. So I already have that overridden, it looks like. Comment.html.twig. Uh, so let's see. Has new timestamp. Footer class, user picture. So let's see what I did in Drupal 7. I'm, I'm going to compare the Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 and see what the differences are. So I have, if there's new, it has a little new thing. Then I have submitted information. So where's the submitted information here? Uh, well, that's nice to do. In Drupal 7, there was no uh, indication of parent class and things like that. So. I guess that's a good improvement in Drupal 8's uh, accessibility. Uh, comment submitted, so there is submitted here. I don't need the user picture. And the permalink should be a link. I think I, what I did in Drupal 7 is I linked the time to, to the actual post. So what I need to do is get the link out of the permalink. So let's see what I got here, permalink is the comment permalink, parent permalink. But that's not a, this is not a link. I'm guessing this is the full markup. So how do I get that to link? Also, I need to change the submitted data. Let's see what's going on here. If I look at the submitted line, username.html.twig, so that says username. Uh, oh, this is kind of annoying. This is another one of those, like, how do you change the submitted by line? Good question. Um, how did I do that in Drupal 7? 
in Drupal 7, I think I had submitted. Yeah, so what I did in Drupal 7 was I did pre-process node for that. And then for comment, I did pre-process comment. I wonder if this works in Drupal 8. I'm going to take this pre-process comment and I'm going to put it here and uncomment it. Uh, Jeff Gearling pre-process comment. Uh, this is probably not going to work, um, but I do have Devel enabled, so I'm going to do DPM. Let, let me check in Drupal 8 if dr template preprocess comment still exists. It looks like it does, so that's good. <laughs> and so the comment would be variables, elements, comment. So it's interesting. It, it looks like the, the theme rendering stuff for comments is practically the same as in Drupal 7, which might be nice. So created, it's created the same. There's variables author. Author, it would be variables author. And it's using Drupal render username. So we might need to do a couple little different things here. Uh, so we need... We need the date, which is created. So, so variables created. So we're going to do that. Uh, and then we want to do format. I think format interval still exists in Drupal. So I'm going to try this. Comment get created time. So that's building the date, get the permalink, would be entity URI. Where's permalink? Permalink. There we go. Uh, that's preview. Okay, and this is... Okay, so it's building the link here. There's all kinds of stuff going on here. Uh, I want to do... Build the permalink. Uh, my brain is starting to have a little bit of a mid-morning not working time. So URI is going to be comment permalink. And then actually I can just copy this out. So it has that, but it's it's not so the, the thing is, I need to get the permalink for this, but all that all that this base function is giving me is a permalink, which is a full link with like a Drupal link that's going to get rendered. So I need to rebuild the link from scratch here. Uh, and this is all out of whack. So let me put that back into whack. I also don't like that format. I like just having it like this inline. Uh, if you don't need it not to be. Also, I'm replacing array with uh, just the open, uh, the empty uh, square brackets, because that's a little nicer on the eyes, in my opinion. I'll do that here too. Replace those. Oops. All right. So, I also don't need this to be a bunch of lines either. I don't think. All right, and then set options attributes. And then, uh, what's going on here? So then I need to create a link right here. And that would be using Drupal L. So I need to change this to use Drupal L uh, comment. Let's see, variables created which is what I set here. And that'd be time ago path uh, URI. Let's see what I was doing here. Comment permalink uh, variables time ago link. Let me see what I did in Drupal 7 time ago link. I didn't use that. Oh, I, this is in submitted Arthur time ago. 
Uh, so L gets the argument of the string with the path and the options. That makes sense, but this is an object in Drupal 8. Uh, Drupal L. These these uh, having the having the function calls on separate lines is throwing my brain off right here. Um, so there's the text and the link. Uh, get subject. Uh, let's see what this does. My brain is not working hard enough to even think about what that actually is doing. Hey, Oliver's on. Thanks for joining. I hope your meeting was incredibly fun. Oh, look at that. So you got submitted by, so that did something. Are there any, there's no warnings on the page. So what's going on here? Oh, permalink. I didn't override permalink. That's the problem. I need to take this out and then variable submitted. It should be, which it is. Why is this? Maybe I need to clear caches. Let me do that. Uh, let's see what happens now. And if that doesn't work, I can do a little DPM in here to see what, what I'm getting and where I'm going wrong. Come on. We can get this done in five minutes, can't we? I'm getting so close. Whoops. We're actually getting pretty close already. I just need to remove the subject too. Refresh this. So while I'm doing that, I'll, ref I'll take out the subject. Don't want the title. Oh, now we're getting errors. So that's that's a good thing, I guess. I'm gonna say Docker PS, and then go into this container. So it, the uh, Drupal base image that I'm using actually doesn't log its output to the, the standard output on the container. So I have to log into the container just to see my error messages. Um, so I'm gonna say de-enter is Docker exec into Jeff Gearling com, and then CD and var log. Uh, seed into Apache 2 uh, tail dash f start at log and we can see what I'm getting here. Okay, so it's saying call to undefined function format interval. Okay, so that function apparently is not existent in Drupal 8. Let's see what happened to it. If I ever hit that kind of thing, I look up Drupal changes and then the function name and I'm not getting anything helpful here. Uh, format plural is a translation service. Um, so I'll go to Drupal changes. This is the other way I look it up. Um, Drupal change records for Drupal core. And I'm going to search this function name, see what happened to it. Format plural. Format interval date service. Okay, so let's see what we need to do to use that. It's funny because what's the other function? There's another function somewhere that uh, was not converted to a service, I don't think. But anyway, we'll just do this. So it says before you had format, format interval, Drupal service date, yeesh, that's a lot of stuff to do for the same thing. But it's object oriented and all that. So let's see if that works. Refresh. And the annoying thing is like these, the using objects and uh, OOP type code is, is nice for like you saw in, in here in my uh, editor, when I hover over this, well, it's not showing up anymore. I can go to that code, uh, the, the code for this a lot easier. There it is. I can go to the code for this uh, very easily because my ID can pick up what all this means in the PHP's context where it couldn't do that before with functions. Uh, however, when you're using procedural code like themes do, uh, because themes use hooks and things that are procedural and they don't use object-oriented code conventions, I can't uh, do the same kind of work that I would do in a normal module. And so you have things like this, like you know, the Drupal global, uh, global library and then call a function in it manually with the two colons. And it's, it's just, it's a little more complicated uh, for any code that's procedural, which 
it's just a sign in, in Drupal 8, and even in Drupal 9, there's still a lot of parts of Drupal that were not really revamped with this new architecture. So you end up with this kind of slightly hybrid monster of code like this that you have to enter into themes and code that's fully object-oriented and, and injectable and all the wonderful testable features we have. Anyway, that's another fun aside, and we're getting up on time. So what's the new error message we're getting here? You've requested a non-existent service date. Well, that's what the documentation told me to do. What is this? It says use... Well, this is annoying. Oh, date formatter. Okay. Let's try that service. Uh, manage. Let's see. Refresh. We'll see if that works. Huh. Oliver has to do some things to get ready for D9. Apparently there's another message. What's the new one? Let's see what's going on now. Entity URI is also undefined. Oh, that's the other one here. We're going to need to fix that. So let me go back to Drupal core changes. And we'll search for entity URI and see what happened to that guy. Uh, this might not be that helpful. Entity interface URI. So there's methods. There's there's no immediate quick things, but it looks like it's entity interface URI. So let's look at what that says. Uh, okay. Let's look at the latest patch for this and see what's going on. Uh, comment URI, okay. So let's try that. Comment URI. Save that. Refresh. Let's see if that works. Sometimes a patch file has what you're actually supposed to do, but that didn't work either, so let's see what, what's next. Uh, there is no, no function comment URI, so that didn't work. Um, so we can't just get it like that. Well, that's annoying. Mm. Uh, we'll just try it doing it this way. Drupal entity URI. See if that works. I'm just spitballing here. Automated testing would be good, for sure. I've debated whether I want... Oh, apparently it still is having issues. What is it saying this time? Yeah, there's no class entity. Okay, so this is not... This might be the, a good point to stop, and then I'll, I'll check into what's going on um, with entity URI and whatever happened to it. Because this patch seems to indicate that I can just get the URI from the thing itself. And I have I have the comment. And if it's an entity, it should have a URI method. Like, it should just work like this. Comment URI. Right? Like, it seems like that would be what this patch is indicating is happening. But it, it, it doesn't seem to be working, so there must be something different that I'm not seeing or that may have changed between when this patch was committed, which was a long time ago, uh, eight years ago. So if something changed in eight years ago to today, that could be causing this issue. The sad thing is that entity URI is only mentioned in these two change records, so I have no clue uh, where to look after this. I'll probably end up doing some Googling and, and figuring out what's going on. But anyway, I'll, I'll figure that out in the next, next uh, session. We'll get to that. And by the way, Oliver is on, and I just wanted to mention that I did figure out that page title thing. And when you go back and look at the beginning of this video, you'll see that. <laughs> Muhammad says, upgrading Drupal is a nightmare. Yes. Uh, definitely check out this thread that I posted on Twitter and linked from this issue uh, on the agenda issue. Um, that thread kind of outlines one of the many small 
highly annoying things that happens uh, when you're upgrading Drupal. And the thing is, like, if you're building an entirely new Drupal 8 site, it's not actually so crazy. Sometimes there's things you run into that you're scratching your head about. But, like, you know, I, I'm just trying to upgrade this one function that I had in Drupal 7, and, you know, that took, what, 30 minutes. And imagine if you, it, like, I, this site only has, had, like, five or six uh, hook overrides in the theme. And if I just wanted to upgrade each one directly, 30 minutes per thing is a lot of time. But imagine if you had a bunch of custom modules in Drupal 7, which a couple of my sites do. That's a lot of time you're going to have to spend figuring everything out uh, with the, you know, translating everything from Drupal 7 into 8. Um, Oliver saying, get URL. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Let's see. Get URL. Let's see. Get, I could actually get you. Yeah. It's not autofilling for me because it doesn't know what that comment is because this is not all object oriented code in this particular space. I'll try that and see. It's doing something. Nope, still didn't work. I'll, I'll figure that out later. Anyway, so that's a fun thing that happens sometimes. I think what I might do between now and the next session is uh, finish up the rest of the little changes for the, the blog post comments because uh, we already got most of those done. And then next week, we'll talk about configuration split. Um, we'll start thinking about when I'm going to actually move the site to a new hosting environment. And we can get into a couple more issues. Um, we might need to do a custom migration for redirects. Because last time I checked, the redirect module didn't upgrade. It didn't actually migrate redirects. And that's something that's very important for my site. Because I built this site. Actually, it was a Zanga blog back in 2004, I think. No, 2000 two or three. I don't know. I started it on Zanga way back in the day. I moved that into a blog running with Thingamablog, which was a Java-based static blogging platform that you uploaded HTML that was exported from it. I, I ran that on my MobileMe account, which was like iTools or something. No, it was iTools and MobileMe, then iCloud or whatever. Uh, and then I migrated it to a custom server that was just HTML and Apache. Then I uh, switched to Drupal 6. And then I upgraded Drupal 6 to 7, and now I'm upgrading to 8. Anyway, throughout each one of those cycles, I actually saved every single content URL and added redirects from all the old URLs to the new ones. And that's a lot of old links that I don't want to have die. So a lot of people skip that part when they do a migration, and they don't make sure that all their old redirections are in the new system. And you end up losing some traffic that way, and people that linked to stuff in the old days, those links just go dead to 404s, and that makes for a frustrating internet experience. So I'm going to make that uh, make that good by migrating the thousands of redirects I have. Um, so we might get into that next time and keep working on some of these other issues. My goal at this point is I think by summertime, hopefully sooner, uh, we can have everything done and I will have a live uh, cutover from jeffgearling.com Drupal 7 to 8. And ideally, when we do that, you won't even notice a difference. <laughs> because we'll have done a good job migrating Drupal 7 to 8, and everything will be close to identical, except for some markup, uh, but the look of the site and the feel and all that. So thanks for sticking around a couple, a couple extra minutes. As always, below me there's a subscribe button. If you liked this episode, <clears throat> well, first of all, hit the like button, which is over. I'm trying to see. Nope, not that way. Nope. Uh, yeah, that. It's somewhere down here. Hit the like button. <clears throat> and... Uh, Subscribe if you want to see more, uh, and unlike me, if you like notifications, you can hit the little no notification icon too. Uh, some of those things can help with my uh, YouTube channel uh, with monetization and things like that, so I can make like a dollar a month instead of 10 cents a month, that kind of thing. But I, uh, I will continue doing these things. I hope that with coronavirus and staying inside and all that, you're not going too mad. Uh, to yesterday and the day before, my youngest daughter who's potty training has requested pretty much every part of the movie uh, The Little Mermaid over and over again, so I've started memorizing most of those songs. Uh, she hasn't seen Frozen yet, but I fear that when she sees Frozen, I will be reliving the nightmare that was, what, three or four years ago whenever Frozen came out, and that song was stuck in my head forever, uh, but I'll have to let that go uh, before next week, I guess. Uh, so, I'll see you guys next time, and now I'm going to try to find where the button is to end the stream, and, uh, and that'll be that.